Hey everybody, uh, welcome to episode 27 of Anime on Drafts. Uh, this is Drew, your host for this week, joined as always uh, by my kawaii co-host, uh, Rolando. Hi. And, uh, you know, Alec. Wow, thanks. So enthusiastic, <laughs> appreciate it. Oh yeah, and Alec. Oh yeah, okay. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Whatever, bro. Okay. <laughs> so uh this week we're we're getting into the like basic bitch uh pumpkin spice of a uh, beer uh we decided to go with uh, the blast point pumpkin down it is a scottish ale with pumpkin 5.8 percent uh, abv i believe alec you were the one uh, who chose uh, the beer this week uh you want to yes, go I ahead did. uh talk about your uh, thought process with this guy it's october there we it go. Is. Thought process is over. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I like pumpkin beers, and they're only around during this time of year. So I was like, "Oh shit, it's October. We're gonna do a pumpkin beer," and here we are. So you're, and so I picked Ballast so Point because it's easier for all of us to get. That's true. Yeah. So you're you're admitting though that uh, you're a basic bitch. Yeah. When it comes to pumpkin beer, I am a basic bitch, all right? I love my pumpkin <laughs> spice beer. For me, BB, the basic bitch. <laughs> I'll admit it. Good deal. Good deal. Good deal. Um, so we kind of poured this out, and uh, when I did, it was like a lot darker uh, than I expected, but then I remembered it was a Scottish ale, so not too, too surprising, uh, I would say. Um, and I, I took a big whiff of this guy and it's very medicinal, uh, for me. Um, I know Alec, uh, you're a big, like, uh, well, you're a BB, um, yeah, when it comes to this. Bitch. And that, that, that was, uh, that was one of the things that uh, you mentioned when we bought this beer. You're like, I'm, I really hope it doesn't taste medicinal. Uh, cause yeah. I know pumpkin, pumpkin is a very bitter sort of melon. Um, and it needs like a lot of care. Like when you think of pumpkin pie, you think of like uh, cinnamon and sugar and like super sweet condensed milk to kind of make that uh, palatable. So Mm -hmm. when these kind of beers aren't done right, they come off as a a very, very medicinal. Um, And when I smell this beer, that's that's what I get. It's kind of very bitter and uh, medicine like I don't know if you guys agree or not. I just want to point out that that pumpkins are not melons. They're not melon. What are they? They're squash. <laughs> Squashes. Uh, is a squash isn't a melon? No. <laughs> well, fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, when I smelled this beer, <laughs> I'll just glaze over that there. <laughs> awkward silence. Um, when I smelled it the first time, so I had one yesterday. I know I cheated. I had it a little bit early. Um, Bitch. I tried it yesterday, um, and the first thing I thought about it was it had a weird medicinally medicinal flavor, but I also had just eaten a bowl of ramen, and uh, I'm going to tell you right now, pumpkin beer and uh, miso ramen aren't really going to mix very well. Um, <clears throat> but the smell to me, it's less medicinal today than it was yesterday. I get more of the kind of pumpkin sweetness but the spiciness is there too but i find that if i smell it with my mouth closed it's one smell and then if i smell it with my mouth open it's a different smell and it's nicer when you smell it with your mouth a little open coming from the basic i actually i actually agree with that that's weird i (laughs) i never smell things with my mouth open but it does smell better maybe it's because uh, you're maybe diluting the the air a bit And I think like your taste buds get engaged by doing that. I don't know. There's something weird. Because I remember when I took the beer class, they said you smell it first with your mouth, uh, just nose in the glass, and then you open your mouth and you smell it. And then you take a sip and you breathe through your nose and then you breathe through your mouth and then like you breathe out. Oh, no, it's this complicated process, some shit like that. And it gets you all the flavors and smells and bullshit and whatnot. whatnot. I think that's something we need to mention is like when you're drinking these beers, like inhale with your nose as you're drinking that definitely changes the flavor 
um, of the beer. I don't think we've mentioned that before, but to our viewers uh, who are trying to get the most out of their beer, please, uh, please do that because it will uh, change the flavor for you for sure. Uh, but uh, as we kind of take a sip of these, uh, Rolando, what do you what are you thinking uh, about this beer in terms of flavor? Um. Sip, sip, sippy, um, sippy. It's it's spicy. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. I kind of get like the cinnamon, nutmeg, cumin combination that's found in Thanksgiving in general. But you know, pumpkin pie. Uh, I do get the pumpkin flavor. It's a. Uh, it's not as um, strong as some other pumpkin ales I've had, but. Mm-hmm. I can definitely taste pumpkin. It's kind of yeah. it's a little spicy and it's not as medicinal as I thought it would be because you guys kept talking about the the smell being all medicinal and stuff, but mm-hmm. it it's not bad. No, it's definitely less medicinal than I thought it would be. I thought it would come out like kind of band-aidy. Um and that's why I was surprised cuz the uh the first time I tried it it had bitter band-aidiness to it. But that I think that was just leftover flavor from something on my in my mouth. But it's you get the spices and the flavor to me is like eating pumpkin pie. And I love pumpkin pie. Um, so I'm pleasantly surprised with how it turned out. I don't think it's the best one I've ever had, but it's still pretty good. Mm-hmm. For me, I kind of wish it had a little bit more cinnamon, a little bit more nutmeg in it. It's definitely there and on your palate, but I think it would be a little bit more enjoyable um, if those spices were more on the forefront. Uh, Pumpkin, I think, is the star um, of this uh, beer, though. Uh, Like both of you mentioned, it's kind of in the forefront and you can taste it very well. I think it would uh, be complemented, though, a little bit better if uh, the spices uh, were a little bit more prominent. Yeah, there's a lot more clove in this than cinnamon. There is a lot of mm-hmm. clover or clove, clover, black clover. Um, yeah, I agree. There's more, uh, there's not that much cinnamon. Um, nutmeg is pretty mild in it as well. I don't know what it is, but I keep drinking it and being like, I don't know, something about it tastes like that kind of creamy, milky flavor that comes from pumpkin pie. I don't know what it is, but it's there kind of at the after, after, after taste. It has it has good mouthfeel and it has like a really good mm-hmm. aftertaste, uh, which is important for me. Um, and you kind of get like what you're saying, like a little bit of that condensed milk, like mouthfeel sort of going on um, as you swallow and things like that. But uh, yeah, mm-hmm. just for me, the the spices need to be a little bit more pronounced, uh, and I think it would would be a better beer for sure. Mm. For sure. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, rate this. Uh, Alec, you were the uh, chooser, the chooser McGuy. Uh, chooser McGuy. And you're, and you're the you're the pumpkin basic bitch expert. Uh, what do you <laughs> what are you thinking uh, when you're rating this? Um, so I've had some pretty bad pumpkin ales in the past, and this is definitely not on their level. Those are the kind of ales where, like, you drink it and you're like, God, this is like a one and a half. Or a two at most. Um, I don't think this is the best one I've ever had. The best one I've ever had, and I will say it, is the one from Taps Fish House and Brewery. And I will say that to my grave. But anyways, um, so I, <laughs> I don't know. I'd probably, on the scale of pumpkin ales, I'd give this like a three and a half. Yeah, three and a half. Three point seven five. Three and a half. Three and a half. We're cutting it there. Three, three, and, and, a half. Half. three and a half. Yeah, three and a half. Yeah, that's what I give it. Rolando, what are you thinking? Yeah, I kind of agree. It's um, it's definitely more on like the dessert beer spectrum, and so while it's nicer to drink, uh, you know, at your leisure, it's not exactly the type of beer you want to have all the time. So, um, I would agree like three and a half. It's it's good. It's not amazing, but. It's still better than a lot of the uh, pumpkin <clears throat> ales out there. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, I was going to kind of mention uh, what you briefly talked about, Rolando, uh, in terms of drinking this beer with like a dessert. I feel like if you had this with like a slice of pumpkin pie and like some whipped cream or some cool whip, 
uh, on there. I think it would kind of elevate uh, this beer. Drinking it by itself um, is kind of you know eh, it's like not bad, um, but I would I would like to see it maybe with like Thanksgiving dinner. I think it would be like maybe elevate a little bit more. So for me, I think I'm gonna mm-hmm. rate it at a three. Um, it's good. It's not the best. I think if we had a little bit more cinnamon in there, it would be um, a little bit elevated. Um, but with that said, I don't want it to become like a horchata style beer. I know uh, we've kind of had some of that before in the past, not necessarily on the show, but uh, you get just like a little bit too much cinnamon on your palate and then it kind of kills everything else for you. So mm-hmm. it needs a little bit more, but not like <laughs> an absurd amount. So uh, you actually just three, three for me. Yep. Give me a good idea, dude. My aunt what's, makes what's sweet potatoes or sweet yams. I can't remember every year, and I always eat them last because they're basically dessert. I am gonna yeah, drink this with, with that and see how it is. No, she puts on mm. no marshmallows. It's just sweet yams and then like a shitload of brown sugar oh. and deliciousness. It's like crunchy. It's kind of like a coffee cake. I don't know. It's weird. It's not the inside, but the top is. I don't know. Good. It's real good. I'm gonna drink it with that, or eat drink it while eating that. Yeah, and then see how I that bet is. That would be good. Mm. Yeah. I bet so. Well, cool. So uh, moving on a little bit, uh, I kind of feel like we should then group uh, our normal beer segment with uh, the anime that's uh, going on this season. The love is a cocktail. Kind of kind of pair these guys together here a little bit. Uh, so we can talk about the beer that we're drinking and then maybe uh, the cocktail that they go through uh, within this anime. So this week in uh, Love is a Cocktail, they had, um, do you remember what it was called, Rolando? I think it was Orange Breeze, something along those lines. Yep. yep. And uh, the ingredients happened to be uh, sake, orange juice, and uh, soda water. Um, we were talking about it a little bit, and it's basically a mimosa but instead of champagne, you sub uh, sake and soda water together to kind of make a uh, sake mosa. Sake mosa. I don't know. Make what, it do, what do you guys think? Do you think this would this would be like interesting? Do you think like a mimosa would be better? Um, obviously, breakfast alcohol, would be right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm not gonna rule it out, but I do think that a mimosa would be better. <laughs> There's a reason yeah. mimosas are so popular. So I'm just going to say mimosa is going to be a better. I, I'm option. willing to <laughs> try I it. try it. Because yes. I've had a beer mosa and those are pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I mm-hmm. agree. Yeah, they are but, pretty good. I think this is one that nice. uh, maybe, maybe we could uh, replicate going forward. This is like pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Yeah. So, we just uh, got to get sake. <laughs> uh, depending depending on when we do our cooking episode, uh, this might be making an appearance for us. Uh, mm-hmm. So I guess uh, look out for that. But other than that, like this anime, like straightforward. She wants the D. She gets drunk. Um, she gets the D. Any, she gets the D. Yeah. The drunk. Anything? <laughs> anything? <The> drunk. <laughs> anything else you want to say about this? Uh, mm. No, it's refreshing and enjoyable mm. to watch a three minute show. That really nothing goes on, except I can kind of maybe bre- possibly see a good cocktail in the middle of it. It kind of breaks up like the monotony of watching like twenty three minute episodes, right? I kind of watch it like in between to like break up some of the other episodes. It's lighthearted, um, and like you said, Alec, it kind of you know may or may not give us uh, an idea for a new cocktail, which is always exciting. So, and the main girl character is kawaii, dude. That's yeah, all you need. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good show. So, yeah. <laughs> good deal. Good deal. Let's move on, guys. Uh, jumping into our weekly pairing. Uh, talk about a couple shows. Uh, let's go ahead and start with uh, Recovery of an MMO Junkie. Um, everybody's watching this show, correct? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Um, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. let's let's uh, start with you, Rolando. Uh, what do you think of, uh, of this week's episode? Um. Well, I mean, I didn't expect them to go with the cliche running into somebody um, at a corner, but <laughs> elbowing. Uh, yeah, like he fucking basically knocked her out with his elbow, and uh, she uh, uh, got in the hospital. I mean, there's no n- nothing else to say about that. Um, 
it's definitely going in the direction I thought it would, where they would interact somehow in real life. And I think it's kind of funny how the like the parallel between uh like the MMO version of them and the real life version. So it's like they're swapping the genders and like everyone's like trying mm-hmm. to give advice in the in the game and they're like expecting like, oh you need yeah, you need to take her out, like take her to a nice dinner and then so like she sends him the the message and then he's like all excited. He's like, Oh yeah, like don't worry, like like let me take you to dinner, like let's clear this all up and it it's just kind of funny how the initiative is like being put on her as the girl, but like her character is a guy. So everyone thinks that Mm -hmm. she's actually a dude and like trying to ask like some girl out. So it's, it's funny, but at the same time, uh, you know, it's going the way I expected it to. Mm -hmm. Sure. I agree. I I like how they cut back to her as a character though. Um, and it's not like, they'll cut back to the the girl what's her the her name the you know the person playing and they'll have her facial expressions and they're just really funny i think I they only, do a good job of like cutting back to her i only know her in game name i don't know her yeah. i don't remember her actual name did they ever actually say it they did in the episode but i don't <laughs> oh, remember okay. it like she i remember some, she like, was embarrassed like, about like, it goofy <clears throat> goofy ass name it starts with an m oh, yeah. both it, both her names start with an, m, with an or m and they both sound the same um, or something like that yeah 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 it's like mega man <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but yeah it's a good show it's fun to watch do you do you guys want to me to read you uh, my copy pasta that i wrote about this uh explaining the plot to somebody oh god um, sure do you guys go ahead do you guys, do you guys <laughs> want me to read that yeah so I said, it's what happens when you're in neat and you play the opposite gender on an MMO and meet someone also playing the opposite gender in an MMO and then somehow run into them in real life, putting them in the hospital all to get a date with them only to realize that they're the person who you have been playing with in an MMO. That's like, that's the plot <laughs> of what's of what's going on here. Yeah, like, yeah it that's is. what's happened. I like how um, now they're both like, oh, rely on me more. And it's like they're going to vent about how they don't know how to approach this other person to each yeah. other when yeah. it's about each other. And it's just going to be ridiculous. I think, I think, though, I, I think, like, the best part of the episode, though, is when, like, he logs off of his girl character and it's, like, two in the morning and she messages him. And it's like, oh, fuck, it's two in the morning and being such a pain in the ass. <laughs> she's, like, panicking over it. She's, like, yelling. It's, like, it. I, th- I think. <laughs> I think I think we've kind of all been there. It's like panicking to send like a text to a girl or a dude. I don't think you guys are messaging a dude at that time in the morning, but um, like messaging a girl (laughs) and then like and then like panicking and be like, what are they going to say? Are they are they going to respond to me? So like you kind of get where she's coming from. Um, It's kind of like a role reversal thing, which is kind of cute. Um, mm-hmm. but you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see kind of how this uh, show evolves, but for the most part, are you guys enjoying, uh, this show as it's going mm-hmm. on? Mm-hmm. Um, there's some, yeah. there's some boring parts for me and like Rolando said, it's kind of predictable, but overall I think it's an enjoyable show for sure. Yeah. I've been having fun watching it. Like you said, the role reversal is kind of fun to watch. Um, it's funny seeing like the guy character and they're like, go ask her on a date. And it's like, okay, I texted mm-hmm. her. And then and then they're all like, oh, what happened? It's like, she asked me out. And it's like, it just seems really funny because it's it just seems like this dude is like texting her and the girl is taking all the initiative. And it's like, this dude has no balls, but it's actually a chick and the girl is actually a dude. And it's just kind of funny. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's the like, copy pasta. It's the copy yes. pasta. Yeah, it's the copy pasta. <laughs> I think it's also a kind of thing where this is actually a show and this and uh, the Emoto Saiba um, show, like they're both not about high school kids. And that's kind of like a nice change of pace for once. Refreshing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Well, speaking of uh, the Emoto show, uh, that's what we were going to talk about next. Uh, A sister's all you need um, is what we're going to call it in English. Um, Rolando talked about it last week, and I'm really upset, Rolando, that you didn't tell me it was a, a Kantoku show, uh, which is an illustrator in Japan who is uh, kind of notorious for drawing etchy shit. 
um, as well as um, like weeb filth, uh, if that's uh, the appropriate thing to say here. Uh, but I'm a, I'm a fan of his. Um, some of you listening may know him from Heneko or um, the Hentai Prince and the Stony Cat. Um, I believe is what it's called. Wait, didn't I, Same art style. Didn't I tell you that this was gonna air in fall? Yeah, but and it I was, was drunk. Him? I I was drunk. And I didn't realize it, and then What's I watched new? the show, and then it was that. So yes, call me out <laughs> on it. It was it was it was my fault. I tried I tried to throw the blame to you, and again, it is it is my fault for drinking too much. Um, you know what what a what a world we live in, boys. Um, I know <laughs> I know both uh, Alec and I didn't watch it uh, last week, and we've caught up this week. But uh, Alec, yes. I wanted to ask you kind of what your um, opinions were mm-hmm. um, starting this show. Um, and I don't, did you watch uh, Stony Hentai Cat Prince? No, I didn't. Okay, um, but um, I guess I'll ask you: What do you think of the show overall, and what do you think of uh, the art style? Um, so overall, I've liked it so far. Um, when I was watching the beginning, if Rolando hadn't, if I didn't know that, <laughs> if I didn't know what Rolando said last week, I would have turned it off. Cause I'm like, am I about to start watching like some sort of weird incest porn or something like that? And it's just, I was just like, okay, this ends, this is really fucking weird. <laughs> like what the hell is going on? And I was sitting there laughing going, now I know exactly what Rolando was talking about, how he was just super like put off by what the heck was going on. It it's off. like... <laughs> He's like drinking his si- or eating his sister's freshly laid eggs. It's like, what the fuck is and she? Her, a chicken and he eats human? Her yeah, and he eats her panties <laughs> and it's made with her milk. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? This is strange. And then it ends. And um, the first episode was fun. It was like good setup. I think the second episode was actually much better than the first one. I liked it a lot more, at least. It was pretty um, deep, right? Yeah, it Surprising. had a lot to it. And I think this is going to be a show. I I see feels incoming, guys. I see feels incoming. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And I'm excited. I mean, for we it. have uh, we have like a little bit of setup in this episode. Uh, Miyako, who is um, like a college student uh, who went to college with the main character uh, Itsuki, and they kind of had like their original falling out and them yelling at each other, you know, classic uh, kind of, you know, anime conflict. Uh, but but the, still the like scene, five times. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly what Rolando said. Uh, you know, she still likes him and like, she like goes over to his house um, in one episode and uh and says you know um you know oh the library is closed i came over to your house to study is that okay and she's like practicing it and like panicking um and things like that so you know she's she's obviously into him and then you have uh nayuta who is just like fucking let me suck your dick like like let me pull it out <laughs> like it's let's go out. have pull sex i want to put it in my mouth <laughs> hey i'm here let's do it and she's so, a like, cat girl uh, apparently yeah, so like a little bit of hair. contrast in characters. I don't know if this is going to end up being conflict, but I can kind of see this uh, being conflict. Uh, but Rolanda, you've watched it the past uh, couple of weeks. Uh, what do you What do you think about it? Kind of uh, moving forward. Um, first of all, I just want to point out that uh, the one great line from this uh, the second episode was, "I thought all college girls were just talking dick eaters." <laughs> um, my favorite line yeah. uh but uh, it's it's pretty good i liked the all of the comedy that's been thrown mm. in so the way i've been thinking about this show is like i kind of said it last week and it's basically arrow manga sensei if it was good <laughs> right, yeah, right. so like it's got the comedy it's got the weird uh main character <laughs> that has a fucking emoto fetish and then it's mm-hmm. got random ass chicks that want the main character for some reason even though he's a perv so you just need someone who can't go up and down stairs yeah, well <laughs> we, we haven't seen it yet but they're right, probably like, or... maybe he can't go up and downstairs. That's oh. why we always see him in his room, <laughs> right? He never leaves. <laughs> he never leaves. We need we need a we need a girl with Kane too. That that will oh, kind fuck. of like solidify this. That would make it the best show that's ever been a show <laughs> ever. <laughs> but 
I, I do like how they're still able to make everything relevant that happens in the episode. So it's like the second episode, there's all this stuff that happens. We've got Miyako's backstory, a little bit of the history um, between Miyako and Nayuta. And then there's like some backstory to the male author friend. I forgot his name. But the guy that I likes to pretend he's uh, gay, Har- Haruto, Haruto, yeah. um, and uh, he, uh, he actually has a little sister, and then, like, it makes Itsuki all jealous and all this stuff, and like, there's all this stuff where like Miyako's jealous of the fact that Itsuki and Naita like have their like goals in life and all of this, and then like, um, the friend the author friend that has a little sister like is jealous of Itsuki because he's got like writing personality and a future in writing, whereas he's more polished, but doesn't have a personality essentially. So, um, a good quote that Itsuki says at the end of the episode is someone always has what you don't have. And it's usually that thing that you don't have that they have that doesn't matter to them as much. So it's like, you're always going to, envy somebody else for something that they have that they ne- don't necessarily like think is like a thing that's really important to them, but it's important to you. So mm-hmm. it's like kind of uh, poking at how humans are always like jealous of one another. That kind of, there's like always the envy. The grass is always greener yeah. on yeah. the other side. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I think uh, the, the one important thing that's going to kind of come to the forefront in the next few episodes is uh, when uh, Miyako and uh, Nayuta are having a kind of a conversation and Miyato goes like, well, I'm rooting for you, uh, Nayuta, um, you know, to kind of get with the main character, Itsuki. Um, We know that that's not her true feelings just because of some of the uh, interaction and backstory that we see between the two. Um, and we can see how they're good friends. I mean, they're fondling each other's breasts. Well, well I mean, one side. I think it's a one is, way. Is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but she, she's kind of willing to like let that happen. Oh, it's the the uh, the artistic, uh, you and know, practice too. or like whatever. Yeah. Well, she's um, a dick eater, so. <laughs> <laughs> she's but I but I think. I think at the end of the day, that friendship's going to come into a kind of conflict here between Nayuta and uh, Miyako and kind of seeing that relationship evolve and maybe uh, come unraveled is going to be a very interesting part of the show. So I'm definitely uh, looking forward to that. I kind of so. think that Nayuta has an idea that Miyako is lying <clears throat> and really likes Oh, him. for sure. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I agree. Like she, she comes off as this naive little girl who just like want, wants his dick and like says like, give me your dick for dessert and shit like that. But <laughs> When we first see her backstory and like how she's talking, she comes off with like that. She had like Ray's personality from Evangelion, where like I like this boy. This is why I like this boy. He saved my life. Fuck you all. Like, and then it, it'll be kind of interesting to see how her personality develops if they give us more backstory. Um, but she's she's not stupid by any means, uh, as far as I'm concerned, and so. You know, seeing seeing those two kind of like duke it out is going to be definitely interesting. I I'm almost certain that there are going to add another character that comes in the, between those two, and um, the main character is going to like her for whatever reason, and it's just going to be a three way all out war uh, between all those characters. So I'm uh, I'm looking forward to that if that is what happens. So. Yeah. I'm waiting for the feels when she's like, yeah, I do like him, but I said I'd root for her and kick all those people's asses. What do I do? That's, <laughs> I just That's going to happen. I just don't know why yeah. Miyako likes him. Because she's a dick eater, dude. Yeah, but he was a complete dick to her. Like, I... <laughs> <laughs> if you're because a someone slut. wrote a bad review, he's because he's someone wrote a bad review of him on Amazon. Yeah. Dude. He was upset. Well, like, that, that happens on a day to day basis. Well, she's apparently like, a true dick eater. wrong with you? And apparently also <laughs> is a masochist because he just fucking oh. abuses her. Oh, that's that's the o- that's the only word you needed to and say. And she likes it. That's the only word you needed to say. That's the only word you needed to say. Let's be <laughs> her name starts with M. So I <laughs> on a side note, I'm happy Kantoku is not drawing lollies. 
Um, for now. I'm glad to see a little bit. Uh, well, for now. Um, he drew a trap, like you said uh, last week. Rwanda, Did you see you the watch the fucking... opening? There's going to be like a fucking <laughs> yeah. Elfie clone in this show. Yeah. Yep. And that's that's who I think is going to be the uh, the the third wheel or the the one that comes between the two. She's going to be a lolly. But I, I'm proud of Kantoku for branching out a little bit. He I can see now that, you know, he's not stuck on drawing lollies and I'm happy. I'm happy about that. So yeah, speaking of drawing, you asked me what I thought about <laughs> the art style. I like yes, the art style. Yes. There you go. Thank you. I think it's good. Thank you. All I, right. I well, like Nayuta or Miyako? In yeah, art that's, style? That's a, no, just in general. Oh, in, in general. That's design. a hard question. Character design. Uh, yeah. Do you like shoot. cats or do you like right. regular people? Do you like cats? Do you like or cats or dick eaters? <laughs> that's a real question. You know, I can see argument. I can see argument for either way: a cat dick eater or yeah. a human yeah. dick eater. Really, like there, there could be an argument either way. <laughs> pick, pick, damn it! Uh, I'll pick next week. Okay, All that's right. fair. Drew. That's All fair. Right. <laughs> you're going to put me on the spot. Yeah, I'm going to put here, you on huh? the spot. Yeah, you got to pick. You're going to put you're going to put me on the spot. Um I like Nyata better. Um I saw that coming. <laughs> her char- to me her character design is better. Um Something about her hair with the cat girl and like spilling beer all over herself and just asking for dick. Like, there's something about that. that it's I can the admire, asking for so. dick. That's what it is, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's because she's easy, yeah. huh? I mean, it's called. Did you, did you guys even have to ask? Did you? Did you guys even have to ask me that question? Like, you you no. know what my answer was, right? <laughs> <laughs> Rolando. Uh, uh, it's tough. Um. I think in terms of uh, the character personality and that I enjoy more, it's probably uh, um, um, Nyato, is that? I forgot how to fucking Cat say her grill? name. Yeah, like her mm-hmm. Nyanta, not, fuck, I forgot how to say her name. Silver-haired bitch. Yeah. But, Silver air, silver-haired cat girl. But I like, uh, <laughs> I think I like Miyako's character design a bit better. <clears throat> I, you um, just like girl you you guys were you like girls who with like brown hair who wear fossil watches like that's why you picked her fossil watches fossil watches <laughs> i mean if you're gonna no. make fun of rin from new game then i mean <laughs> hifumi hifumi from new game everybody knows she she um, got no screen time dude she got no screen no it was time. awful it was yeah, that's why the second She's season the got one. a lower rating for me <laughs> yeah. um yeah, I, I, I guess fine. If everyone's choosing, I'll choose this week. Um, you can choose next week. We'll come back. No, nope, we'll come back. No, 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 no. Um, so we have no, no, we've no. got cat grill and then another grill. Um, well, you can you can also trap. choose the little brother. Yeah, you yeah. can choose the little brother. No, dude, like, I'm gonna tell okay. you. They did that random scene at the end where the little brother was like in the bath with their hand up. I'm like, don't tell me they're gonna do some weird thing where he doesn't actually know that his little brother is actually a girl. His oh, they're totally life, gonna do that. A chick. Do you oh, not? Oh my god. Yeah, know this genre. It's a Kontoku anime. Of course, it's a totally Kontoku do that. anime. <laughs> of course, I know they're gonna do it, but I'm like, please don't. <laughs> Just don't do it. They're gonna um, do that. I'm not picking the little brother. Um, I'll go with uh, silver-haired cat girl. Yeah. I think oh, I just she got like naked? her. No, I just I she's like her. He like he likes Elf Yamada. He likes Elf Yamada, so therefore he likes her. Her character is more fun to watch and just more enjoyable, like in the show. And then I guess yeah. I like her character design better because she's more animated and her ears turn into cat ears, and she goes blah, and it's just funny. Yep. Yeah. There you go. She she's a good what character design for sure. For mm-hmm. sure. Cool. So that was our uh, weekly pairing for this week. Uh, let's all jump into uh, happy hour. We have uh, Food Wars, um, mm-hmm. second episode. Um, I'll kind of start it off here. Um, not a lot, you know, went down uh, this episode. Um, we have Soma setting up his uh, booth uh, right outside uh-huh. um, his rival, you know, going to try to bring him down with his with uh, Chinese homie. food. 
yeah. Um, you know, Breen, Me- Megumi, you know, she's a, she's a true bro coming in there like, well, I didn't right. volunteer for anybody else. I thought I'd help you out. And she's just she's just like, OK, hand emojis. She's like she's coming up there for me and like and like good girls like uh, in this Eating anime. all his shitty but, spicy food and dying um, <clears throat> just to help him yeah, out. <laughs> she's she, she's a good she's a good girl. Um, nothing lewd there. Just, just a solid, a solid friend. Um, we see also Alice, um, and, uh, Ryu and, um, Akira, you know, kind of struggling in there, uh, coming together and making a booth. That was kind of funny, but again, Alice is my best girl, so I'm going to support her in whatever she does. Um, but other than that, you know, not, not a lot of development here, um, Next episode, I think, is kind of going to be more intense. We're going to see, like, a battle between uh, this, like, whatever. Oh, he's making, like, the Chinese tofu dish versus, like, these sesame steam buns. So we'll kind of see that uh, rivalry rivalry, and see how a little cart can do against, like, a full-blown, like, Chinese imperial palace. <laughs> um, uh, we'll see kind of how that goes down. But uh, what, did you, what did you guys uh, think of this episode? Bueller, Bueller, <laughs> Alec. <laughs> I was just like, uh, uh, I liked it. Um, I like that he's got his little cart with his one person, and uh, and he's cooking those steam buns, and he's taking inspiration from his dad. Um, I, I like you said, it, what is is her name? Megumin, Megumi, whatever her name Megumi, is. Yeah. Um, yeah, Megumi. Uh, she is own. coming up. I thought she was cool before. But now I'm like, damn, she's like the real homie. Like I said, she's the coolest. Um, Like everyone else is helping him, but she's like, no, I just figured I'd help you out. She's going to become show's best grill just because she's the real homie. Um, Do not loot her. She's pure. No, she's she's 100 percent pure. Nothing more pure than Megami in Food Wars, Um, except when she gets attacked by his tentacle food. Peanut and butter it's, tentacles. It's pin, peanut butter <laughs> octopus. <laughs> Ugh, that just sounds disgusting. But all in all, I, I, I not much happened, but I, I like kind of some of the developments they made, and it'll be interesting to see what they do. To, I mean, we obviously know that he won't get kicked out because they have an entire season to go through. Um, and so it'll be interesting to see like if he's got some trick up his sleeve besides just those steam buns, which I'm sure he does, and what it is. And so that'll be cool. Also, I see the something pace. happening where his tickets get stolen or some bullshit. Because it's like, no, make no. sure your tickets aren't late. And then some bullshit's going to happen. I'm telling you. Something. I'm like, yeah, no, don't do that. <laughs> but no, like, they set it up so easy for, for that. sure. Like, they're, they're not going to mention that unless it's going to have some sort of relevance in the story. No. He's going to be like a head and they're going to go burn his tickets. And he's going to ha you can't win now. And then he's going to be like, oh, it, just kidding. I'm going to cook a thousand omelets in a minute. It then, won't. I bet you it <laughs> won't even. It won't have to do with the Chinese research society. It's probably going to be the treasurer dude in the Elite Ten. Ah, oh, that that because be that true. dude yeah, is always trying happening. to fuck with him. Yeah, he's yeah, he he's him. scheming. But something's going to um, happen with those tickets. The um the pacing gives me hope that this uh, show is going to be twenty four episodes. We have like the inside scoop where like the Chinese um for some reason have like the count on how many episodes this is going to be. Uh, and they were saying 24 episodes. So I'm hoping that, uh, with this style of pacing, how they're going, that we will get 24 episodes and we'll kind of get a little bit more development. Uh, so that would be good. Also, I wanted to mention something that I saw, uh, this week that I didn't catch, uh, during the, uh, the first episode watching the OP, we had a uh, young arena um basically god tongue bitch uh, if you don't know her uh sh- in the op she was reaching out to uh, soma's dad um so she's clearly has some sort of daddy issues and for some reason relates that to soma unconsciously so that's kind of uh, where that development i i can see that development going i'm just going to call i'm going to call that out right now she has now. a picture of soma's she, dad in her purse she, she already has a lot of respect for Silva's dad because he used to cook for her when she was Yeah, a but kid. she doesn't know she doesn't know who he is though. Yeah, but like that's the whole symbolism behind it cuz it's like they're trying to make it seem like 
So like when she was a kid, no one could make good food for her until Soma's dad showed up. And then now Soma has appeared and is actually making food that she like can palate she likes. and likes and yeah. is becoming closer to him. So I don't know if well, that's I, want, I, daddy I, I wanted to call that out. I wanted to call that out. <laughs> There's clearly daddy issues because she has no father. You know? Guys? Guys? I'm, I'm confused. Uh, guys? I don't get it. Let's guys? Let's see if guys? Guys? I don't get guys. it. I'm a little lost. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> um, with that said anybody else want to add anything <laughs> to this episode <laughs> oh god <laughs> oh god no <laughs> no I'm okay help help I'm good. me <laughs> I'm good. help somebody help him <laughs> help help so him he's King's got daddy game. issues <laughs> so King's game <laughs> <laughs> so King's <Drew>. game <laughs> Um, <laughs> so King's Game, clearly no daddy issues in, uh, in this episode. <laughs> no, none at all. Just crazy um, people. <laughs> I, I honestly didn't like this episode because it felt like all over the place. Like mm-hmm. there was like things happening and then like they did a flashback and then like characters dramatically changing their like like their character traits and things like that, like out of fucking nowhere. And it just, it's, it felt like sloppy. Like it was hard. It wasn't hard to follow because it was simple, but it Mm. was just like all fucking over the place. Like what did you, what did you think about it? I I actually agree. Um, Like the girl changing, I kind of saw something like that happening, but I didn't want it to. Because I actually kind of liked the way they were going with her character. I think it would have been better than having the typical girl who's super nice changing into some girl who's like, well, I just want to survive and then being crazy. I mean, she did like lose both her parents and then like all this shit in like a plane accident. And she's like obviously being fake nice to everyone. But the episode did seem all over the place. And with the flashback, I was like, why are you flashbacking? We know everyone died. We don't we don't need any more information like the the thing the thing with her she went from in like a a minute span she went from i want you to fuck me so that you take my virginity before someone else so we can you know fulfill the king's request to i fucking hate you i'm going to kill you let's turn the whole class against you so that they mm-hmm. kill you and that happened yeah. within a 1 minute span and i was like yeah. What the fuck? It it, it, it yeah. one it, one it came out of nowhere, and mm-hmm. I was just I was watching it, and I'm just like, did I like miss like three minutes of like content or something? No. She she literally went, okay, I fucking yeah. hate you. Let's murder you. Yeah. You're a fucking bitch. Like, in in literally like a minute time, and I'm just yeah. like, they did accelerate what? that switch. But like, she's the type of character who can switch, but. It's never that fast. I agree. I agree that they just like made it just way too quick. And then all of a sudden she's like, hey, come talk to me. Or, and then like yeah. saying she raped him and everyone's like listening to her or something, even though she said in front of the entire class, come talk to me. And then they yeah. walked like 10 feet away where everyone could see them. It's like, what the fuck is going on? Anyways, but she, I, she literally, she agree. literally, so Rolando, get this. She literally said like, fuck me because I want you to take my virginity. And then she started yelling at him. Like, I fucking hate you. And then she said in front of the entire class that was around them, I need to go talk to you over here. And they walked 10 feet where the whole class could see them. And she immediately starts yelling, he's raping me. Yeah. And the whole class can still see them. They walk <laughs> over and he's like. And then they walk and, over and, and, and so, beating him. And so the main character is then like, you saw me walk over here. Like, she said she wanted to talk to me. He's like, dude, back me up. And he's like, uh, I didn't I didn't hear anything. He's like, hey, girl, like, back me up. You all heard this. Like, uh, I, I didn't say anything. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? It sounds like a stupid show. <laughs> like, yeah, it's not. I, I, this it, might be. Like, the one of the ones I drop. <laughs> the first point. episode was so good. I like the And then the first th- this happened. This happened. And I'm like, what? What the fuck is going yeah, on? Sounds like it's turning into uh, that one show 
uh, a couple or a few seasons ago where they fucking take the bus into the the lost village or something. I think it was called the lost village. Oh god, that one. And, and then like it gets <laughs> all fucking weird and shit and doesn't make any sense. Where they're seeing their well, fears, yeah, that and then they one. die to them, yeah. That fucking well, like, show. Part part of the problem was they jumped into this flashback without even like prefacing it. They were like all talking <clears throat> in this park. We're like, oh, we're all gonna die, and then like a second later, they were in this flashback, and you had to like mm-hmm. wait for like a long time to like realize like, oh, they're like actually in a flashback, like. What yeah, is going I thought on? they were. I was like, are they in a flashback of like this class, like a different, another King's Game mm-hmm. thing, or is this the previous one? And it was the previous well, one. Well, because and it hopped out of nowhere, <laughs> and it was stupid. Well, and because oh, we God. don't we don't know the characters that well because it's been no. one episode. And I'm like, mm-hmm. are these the characters of the current class? Are these the past class? Like, I don't. It's I don't know. And then it comes but out, I'm, and it's just the main character going, "You have to listen to me!" Like yelling, and you're like. What the fuck is happening? This is so stupid. And then that kid like hangs himself or or whatever, like before. I don't know. And it's just, it's just stupid. And that girl's like, oh, I don't want to, I want to do with you before. And then she's like, oh, clearly you don't know a way around this. And it's like, where the fuck is this coming? Yeah. It's just all over the place. It made sense sort of, but not really. It made sense because the story is not complex. They're playing a game. They have to yeah. follow the things they or they die. Yeah, yeah. But the way exactly. they're going about the rest of it is convoluted and stupid. I'm like, this is it. I don't even know if it's convoluted so much as it's just not. It, it doesn't have any continuity to it whatsoever. And like you, like you said, they're not trying to make it complicated. The rules are fucking simple. Yeah. Like, <laughs> do the instructions or you die. There's 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 nothing tricky about it. Like it's just all human emotion and like if you can do these things and they're trying to make it complex it seems like or by like jumping all over the place but it's just it's it's dumb. It's So needless to say, I don't think either of us are very pleased with it right now. This might be a three episode and drop <laughs> situation. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm going to watch it next week to see if they can yeah. like change it up, but if it's just like more nonsense it's like why even waste your time it's if it goes back (laughs) out was episode one that'll be cool but if it's the same as episode two again i'm just like i'm over that it's boring yeah i I agree i agree yep um i know uh rolando you watched a couple different shows uh that we didn't watch um both uh, just because and uh love live Mm -hmm. uh did you want to talk about those uh pretty briefly uh yeah so uh love live going continuing with it's trying to be like it's disney deal uh so basically um the drama from the previous week can be solved um of course if they get a hundred prospective students to um (laughs) possibly join the school and so uh now the group also has to worry about the next Love Live qualifiers. So they need to make two songs. So we Ooh. get the group split up. So Chica, Rico, and Yo, they are the normal people that like make the songs, write the lyrics, and make the costumes. So they're making the song for the open house, and then the other six have to make the song for the Love Live qualifiers. And um, we find out that although Mari, Daya, and Kanan like did, you know, their own share of like song writing and uh, costume making when they were still a three idol unit in their first year of high school, um, they d- don't necessarily work well with the three first years, um, and so they were basically just arguing. We find out that Mari likes to make metal music. Um, <laughs> which is interesting nice uh and so i guess it makes sense that like the guilty kiss subunit that's like mari Johanne, and rico has like some metal songs in it so it's just like normally you think like oh it's because Johanne is a fallen angel it's like no apparently mari likes fucking metal uh give me chocolate uh about yeah it. give her I'm about <laughs> give him chocolate uh but the, there's a, so many fucking sappy like overdone cheese moments that i just i know when they're coming because 
they just like everyone stops talking and then like they focus on all they all focus on the same thing in this case it was the sound of fucking rain leaking from the ceiling into like buckets and cups oh and stuff God. and uh, they're like oh no we have the inspiration for a song it's just like i fucking knew this was gonna happen <laughs> and uh, the ironic not ironically but co- very coincidentally quote unquote this episode title was the sound of rain oh my god and uh yeah so it's th- it's still that meme show that it is <laughs> um just because uh actually has become my uh um the show that i'm gonna look forward to every week because something i found out recently was uh the author of sakura so no pet nakanajo um is actually the one that's Ooh. writing the script for this um anime original and I was like, I oh, like so that I, makes I'm sense why I then. like the pacing, why I like the writing. It's not, like, revealing too much at once. Um, the romance romance aspects are uh, well done, and, like, it's not just too much drama at once. So, like, we have get this, like, love polygon that's starting to shape. So, like, the main character, Eita, likes or has like this or liked this girl Natsume in middle school so he comes back after four years and then apparently like we f- find out that she likes his friend Haruto but his, this Haruto dude likes this girl in band Morikawa and then but also Natsume like has like an interesting relationship with Eita mm. so it's I'm not really sure who she likes or whether she's confused herself because she seems to have like a weird chemistry with the main character Eita, but still exhibits like she has this unrequited love for Haruto. So it's kind of weird, but, um, it's, I think it's been well done so far. Um, I Where are think you watching it by the way, uh, just on, on the high seas. Oh, it's on country. Oh, high right. seas. Right, it's not on control. All right. Yeah. So Alec, uh Sakura Sakura So is a uh one of the classics that I, I recommend you watch if you if you haven't already. Um if you want if you wanna have some if you wanna have some feels, that uh, graduation <laughs> ceremony. It's good. Uh, I would watch Sakura So and if you end up liking it, I would for sure watch this show. Um uh I, I do have to say that although I do like the you know, like the vibe and the pacing of it, like luckily so far, there's no there's no best girl to get snubbed um, in this show, mm-hmm. but that's to be seen. So it's only been two episodes. There it could, could happen. Yeah, there the could gr- be the 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 girl the girl the girl they chose in Sakura. So is um, what's don't, what's don't the word I'm looking it. for, uh, Rolando? It, what's what's the word I'm looking no for? No spoilers. I'm not gonna, spoil it. I'm right. not gonna say it. But but you know what I'm thinking. Yeah, but uh, you anyway. know what girl I'm talking about that was best girl. Yes, but of course, of course. If you know, like the, the way the anime ends, like I read on how the light novel goes, because it continues past where the anime goes. Like mm-hmm. I guess that her character like just disappears after like the third volume oh, or something, God. or some some shit God, like that. Sad. So it's just like, well, yeah, no wonder she can't win. Like she just fucking gets deleted from the light novel, like. <laughs> she gone. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, someone logged um, me that show, and I'll watch it later. I will. I will. Um, but yeah, just because sounds interesting to me, just uh, for the Sakura so um, connect there. So I, I may check it out going forward. But uh, moving on a little bit, I know you guys are watching Black Clover. I'm not watching Black Co- Clover. We discussed that last week. Uh, but Alec. Uh, What's the what's this show doing for you? Is it is it good? Is it bad? Is it uh, progressing? Uh, what's going on? <clears throat> I mean, I like it. It's not it's not complicated. Uh, it's just kind of like I think it'll just be fun to watch. One of those ones where you can just sh- kind of shut your brain off and watch it. It doesn't seem to have I don't know. It doesn't seem to have anything really crazy to it to me. Um, but I I kind of see the the main character gets the five leaf clover and they say it has a demon in it. His brother has the four leaf clover, and then they're talking about how the first king of king of mages or whatever the shit had the, the four leaf clover. The wizard king had the four leaf clover, and I'm like, 
is this just a repeat of like the first Wizard King where the first Wizard King was a four leaf clover and then his brother went crazy and had the five leaf clover and then he had to kill his brother. And then in this situation, his it's going to be where like that's the same thing going on. But this time the five leaf clover kid is just more mentally tough and then they become this ultimate duo and they make the world awesome. And I'm just I don't know. I could easily see <laughs> it coming that way. Good. Yeah, right. <laughs> you kind of it seems like it's going that way, right? Yeah. And so I'm like if I can already see like have an idea and think that it's relatively correct that that this is the route of the whole show, then I can just click my brain off and just yeah. watch it. And so I think it's just fun to watch, but I mean, what do you think, Rolando? Have you been enjoying watching it or? That is interesting. Um <clears throat> I just thought it was kind of weird how in the flashback where um Fucking, I already can't remember the the two characters' names. Um, yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> but like the four leaf, four leaf clover, clover guy, yeah. he's like getting his ass beat by this grown man who's trying to steal his pendant, and then he like five leaf clover dude fucking shows up and like starts attacking him, going like give it back, give it back to him. It just <laughs> and then like beat. he just is like apparently his yelling comes to a use. So, like, he just keeps <laughs> yelling, and then it's just the guy finally gives up and just gives the pendant back. It's just, like, what you got, like, fucking threatened by a kid that just was yelling at you, and you were beating the shit out of him. It's like, you probably could have fucking knocked both of these kids out and taken the pendant, but... You just like all of a sudden grew a conscience. Like, I don't know. See, it what happened is fucking stupid. he was drunk when he was beating on the kids, and then he took so long to beat on Five Leaf Clover Kid that he, he started up. to sober up and he's like, what the fuck am I doing? Why am I just fucking up these children? I'm going to go now. And uh, that's what I think happened. Yeah. <laughs> it's the only plausible explanation that I can think of. It was just dumb. Yeah, <laughs> it was an odd scene. And then they're like, we're both going to be the king of wizards. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're brothers. Uh-huh. And now and that's why I was like, oh, God, one's the demon, one's the king. And instead of fighting each other, they're going to become this ultimate duo. And then there's going to be a moment where they like almost do fight each other. But it's going to be reversed. It's going to be the four leaf clover guy being evil and the five leaf clover being dude being the good guy. And then he's going to beat him down and he's going to be like, who do you what are you doing? And then they're going to become an ultimate duo again. And that's what it's going to do. Yep. Nice. Nice. Yep, nice. that's the show. <laughs> so, so you guys were wondering why I don't watch uh, fantasy anime anymore. It's not, <laughs> not even all really, shows are like that. It's not even really fantasy an- like anime per se. It's just shonen. <clears throat> yeah, it is really yeah. shonen. <laughs> it's just shonen in a anyway. fantasy setting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh... That about wraps it up, I think, for uh, the shows we wanted to talk about. Uh, is there anything else uh, you guys wanted to bring up? I know Worlds is going on. Is anything uh, unique going on there? I know Cloud9 is like doing well. Well, Cloud9 got to Worlds. quarterfinals. Immortals and yeah. TSM both fucking choked, as usual. Yeah, what's new? <laughs> what's new? <laughs> fucking stupid. NA sucks, as usual. <laughs> yeah. Goddamn TSM. Just fucking... God, whatever. <laughs> what like, up, it's man. TSM Mia Khalifa. That's what happened. <laughs> no, yeah, that's what happened in Dota too to my EG boys. So you know the the curse. And they can't uh, do anything in any esport. Yeah, except for Smash. <laughs> well, well, maybe Cloud, maybe Cloud Nine makes a run. You know, you never, you never know, you never know. Yeah, the, uh, they like, have the easiest quarterfinal matchup. There you go. There you go. I believe. I believe in the lads. Faker. I believe in the lads. I want sneaky, um, sneaky. Get it, <laughs> go sneaky, go. Um, any anything else though you, you guys want to talk about or? Um, I um, did watch the three prequel episodes to Magus Bride. I thought it was. What'd pretty What do you good. think? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. I just, it, I just have some like odd questions because like it seems like the way they <clears throat> kind of paint Chise, the main girl. Is like she seems slightly like either schizophrenic or just like slightly psychotic because she keeps <laughs> seeing these things, but it's like, n- like in real life, you would <clears throat> assume that like she's like slightly psychotic or something, but um, 
these are in this world like these things actually exist because like mm-hmm. there's magic and stuff so it's just w- kind of weird and so like everyone just thinks she has a mental illness and then like her mother like commits suicide because she can't deal with her and then mm-hmm. nobody can take her in and it just it was just like really freaking dark but yeah it's really dark it's definitely got um, that ghibli vibe it's got a lot of disney vibe to it too um there's a lot of like the score is good um there's yeah, a lot the of like is my favorite part um mickey mousing is like a term we use when we refer to like the the score um closely following the action of what's going on screen and like it does that pretty like to a good extent that you see in a lot of disney films so uh when like all the little spirit things show up yeah like it's Mm -hmm. i i enjoyed watching the three prequel episodes so i'm gonna catch up on this current season and hopefully we can talk about it episode three next yeah. week or something i think what you said about her seeming schizophrenic they did a good job of making her seem that way because i think they're trying to in those three they they kind of make you see her at first in the perspective of somebody who can't like see all those things mm-hmm. and so that's how she would come across as like schizophrenic but then you learn like she's just seeing stuff and she's never really had anyone to teach her like what these things are so she thinks she's crazy too yeah but she just sees like all this crap and so i think they do a really good job of like all that. And I, I mean, I've read the entire um, light novel now. Um, so I know more so you know going forward. I, I know the whole story. And there's like, you learn some stuff later. And I'm not going to like spoil anything, but like, they did a really good job with those prequel episodes, kind of explaining her past and like the situation she's in and all that. And so, like, after reading it, I liked those three episodes even more. And then I do agree with you with the like, what you, you called Mickey Mousing. Um, I, I think they do a really good job with that. That's why I think when I was watching it originally, it reminded me a lot of Spirited Away because they do a lot in that movie as well. When like all the different spirits show up, like the the soot balls and all that crap, mm-hmm. I think they do a good job. But um, yeah, I, it's a good show. Glad you like it. Yeah, it's been uh, really promising. Mm-hmm. Well, cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. All um, right. Yeah, I think I think other than that, we can kind of wrap it up here. Um, you know, we again we had the uh, blast point, uh, pumpkin down Scottish ale with pumpkin. Um, a little, a couple of mixed reviews here, but overall, uh, generally pretty good. Oh, um, sorry. So I've been dissecting sorry. this beer before before we sign off. I've been throughout the episode. I found something cool. If, like you said earlier, you said breathe, you know, like remember to breathe through your nose when you're taking a drink. If you Mm -hmm. breathe through your nose as you're taking a gulp, you get it kind of splits up the flavors. So when you do that, you first, the, that first flavor you get reminds me of the pie crust of a pumpkin pie. And then right after that, you get hit by the spices. And then after that, we were kind of talking how it has that like, uh, whipped cream or like a creamer, uh, aftertaste. And so it kind of gives you the whole like, pumpkin pie shit in in a beer and so i actually i thought it was pretty cool it doesn't change my rating but you can kind of like see the phases of it if you do that yeah nice anyways sorry uh, with that said you know (laughs) the blast point pumpkin down um just wanted to do a couple shout outs uh to ourselves i guess check us out <laughs> on twitter uh at anime on draft uh our wordpress anime on draft dot uh, wordpress dot com facebook uh, instagram etc just search for us at uh, anime on draft uh with that said you guys uh, anything else to add or should i uh close it out for us no i'm all good cool so uh yeah, uh, look forward to next week. Uh, we'll be talking about a lot of the same shows. Uh, but with that said, uh, we'll catch you later. Bye. See ya, everybody. Bye.